go ahead and do that, and I'll hit the record button. All right, well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Sam Alley, and uh, on behalf of the HIS Capital Group, I am proud to present the first in a series of webinars designed to help you navigate through the often confusing world of self-directed retirement plans and maybe help you decide which type might be the right fit for your investing future. Now, everyone's future plans are unique, meaning a cookie-cutter, one-size-fits-all plan should not be among your choices. Now, we're also going to discuss how many of today's investors are using these retirement vehicles to create tax-free wealth through real estate. Now, for those of you joining us this evening, I simply applaud you for making the time to do so. There are $17 trillion in IRAs and other savings plans, yet only 3% is self-directed. 3% certainly puts you in an exclusive company. Now, you've chosen to take control of your financial futures. You know that building your wealth team or your power team and adding valued and trusted advisors like our guest here this evening is imperative to your financial well-being. We need their expertise to present us with viable options, to grow our nest eggs, and, and more importantly, to show us how to protect it. In, in fact, the team you surround yourself with may very well be the most important investment that you ever make. Now, look, we all have our own financial goals. Some of us want to leave a legacy for our children or, or put them through school. Others want the luxury of being able to travel where and when they want without worry. Uh, one thing is for certain, we all want to keep more of what we've earned and ultimately outlive our money. Now, our featured speaker this evening is recognized as one of the country's foremost experts on small business tax strategies, retirement plans, and for well over 25 years, I'm not dating you here, Frank, but well over 25 years, Dave Cole has worked tirelessly to help business owners and investors keep more of their hard-earned dollar. Dave's early career was spent teaching small business owners and financial pros how to use those nice little hidden gems in the tax code to reduce their taxes to the legal minimum. David, I certainly wish I knew you 10 years ago. Uh, he's also provided uh, specialized training for hundreds of real estate, tax, and other financial industry pros uh, across the country designing proven solutions for their clients. Today, Dave's here with us as he's educating and creating solutions for investors, both novice and accredited. Uh, structuring 100% self-directed plans, inspiring and empowering investors truly to take complete checkbook control of their futures. Uh, along with his wife, Jill, he's got five children and five grandkids. And I'm pretty confident that uh, your children and your grandchildren, my friend, are certainly uh, going to have an edge over their peers when it comes to planning out their financial future. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, live from beautiful Sedona, Arizona, to drop some knowledge on all of us, Welcome, Mr. Dave Cole. David, come on out, my friend. Well, Sam, thank you very much for that uh, introduction. I've been looking forward to this, and we're going to uh, spend a few minutes here uh, sharing some information that I think people are going to find really eye-opening. And again, just to uh, just to reiterate just a little bit of the information <clears throat> that uh, you mentioned earlier, you know, why Dave Cole? You know, why, why, why should you listen to me? Well, it's, uh, it's something that I've been doing for a long, long time, as, as Sam mentioned. I've spent about uh, 25 years, actually going into 26 years now, uh, educating as many people as I can all across this country that there are tools that you can use to legally, ethically, morally reduce your taxes to the minimum as long as you follow the outlines that Congress has created. And when I'm visiting with people and educating them, maybe I'm doing a webinar like this or, or speaking a live speaking event, uh, it seems that the topic that most people zero in on really is the retirement plan <clears throat> because that is your future. Uh, we're not all going to work forever. And uh, at some point, you want to be able to retire, enjoy the life that you've envisioned. And to do that, you've got to have money. And so for the past 15 years, uh, I've really been uh, – a self-directed IRA expert around the nation. I've done a lot of work in that arena, uh, showing people that uh, that tool could be used to give them more control to build money for the future in a more uh, controlled fashion. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the stock market today. Uh, the stock market uh, can make you money. It has made people a lot of money. 
But the last few years, it seems to really struggle. It can't find its legs, and people have lost a considerable amount of money in the stock market. So not keeping your eggs all in one basket, I think everyone would agree with, is a truism that applies now more than ever. So with the interest in real estate and making money from a hard asset and being able to control that through self-direction, uh, finally you're starting to marry the tools together and the opportunities so that you can do something very positive, very proactive about uh, building money for the future. I've had the uh, pleasure of instructing financial professionals all around the country. Uh, you would think that financial professionals everywhere would want this information. Unfortunately, that's just not the case. But there are a lot of good uh, folks out there that want answers for their clients and uh, are spending the time and effort and, and money to dig in and find those answers, and I enjoy teaching them. The specialty, of course, that they're looking at, too, is how do you invest in real estate with a retirement plan? Most people are very traditional. You invest in your stocks, your bonds, or your, or your mutual funds that the brokerage offers you. Yet from the very beginning, from the creation of IRAs, you've always been able to invest in real estate. We're going to talk about why that hasn't been an option for you. Uh, I think that you'll agree when you, we talk about that and understand that reason. Uh, Personal Success Planning is the uh, name of our company. Uh, we chose that name because that's what it's all about. It's about you. No one else. This is your money. This is your family. This is your future. And so you really have to find a way to experience success at whatever level that means for you. Uh, just a side note, too, I maintain the highest accredited uh, rating with the uh, Better Business Bureau. Uh, you'll be able to visit my profile on LinkedIn and other sources, too, to learn a little bit more about me as well as our, our website. So with that being said, let's go ahead. Uh, I don't want to rub the pain or the salt in the wounds, so to speak, but we do need to look back over the last few years to see why so many people are in the predicament they are now. Because most people didn't do anything different. They went on doing exactly what they were told they should be doing, but it was the economy that changed. It was, it was the financial world that changed on us. Now, the nice word to call what we've seen, I guess, is unbelievable. I'm sure you might have a more colorful word to use than what we've seen in the last few years. But, I mean, think about it. We've seen massive tax bailouts using whose money? <laughs> Our money, right, and the hundreds of billions of dollars. We've seen Wall Street give themselves bonuses for a job well done. I don't understand what job they did well, but they seem to think so. And we've seen a lot of greed by financial institutions that we trusted, that uh, were there to, that should have honored that trust. But it seems like it was just a free-for-all to get whatever they could. Basically, we've seen billions of dollars go up in smoke uh, in a very short period of time. And the biggest victim of this money that's gone up in smoke is really retirement plans. 401ks and IRAs took a huge hit. And the reason being is that was long-term money invested in the market. You were told, leave it alone. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Over time, you'll make money. And unfortunately, with the recession that we've gone through, it involved real estate, it involved the stock market, and it involved the banking industry. That was a one, two, three punch that most retirement plans just couldn't sustain. They couldn't recover from. So unfortunately, people have had a really rude awakening that uh, they need to get more proactively involved in managing their investments. And perhaps that's exactly why you're listening to this webinar, is that you're looking for alternatives and solutions so that you can have control of what your retirement plan is invested in and thus what its overall growth will be for the future. And it really did create a, a perfect storm. I like this uh, a particular uh, slide here, the shock market. <laughs> Uh, it was a shock. Even people that knew it was coming did not expect this recession to be as deep and as long as it lasted. In fact, uh, it, we lost more personal wealth in this country than ever before in history, including the Great Depression. Um, it really did change people's lives regardless of the financial level of your life, where you were, whether you had a little or you had a lot. Everyone suffered at one, one uh, point or another during this particular uh, now, it's 
not over, which can be a good thing and a bad thing depending on how you're viewing it. It's a it's a bad thing if you're still lost and don't know what to do or what to invest in or how to, to take care of yourself. But on the other hand, it's a good thing if you're looking to make investments. In fact, opportunities in real estate that you may never see again in your lifetime uh, are out there because it's not just the recession that we've had to deal with. We still have to deal with another problem or challenge, and that really is inflation. Uh, it's always here. It's always present. It may reduce for a bit, but it comes back. And the situation that we have ourselves in, I think most people would agree that uh, recession hasn't left us and it doesn't look too good for the future. Uh, how long will it be before all of us are paying $5 or more per gallon of gas? Uh, recently, California exceeded $5 a gallon. Uh, it will think of $3.50 as the good old days. So we know it's coming, and every time you go to the grocery store and you buy your, your staples for the week and, and different things, you see the prices going up. So future planning, this type of planning that, that you're uh, taking on, which is, is deciding what is best for you to invest in, you have to take into account that the yield on that investment also has to make, uh, make you money for the future, not just a profit on your money now, but it has to take into account inflation. And because that is what you're going to be dealing with, all of us are going to be dealing with when we retire in the future, is it will take more dollars to buy the same goods and services. So now is the time to really seriously give thought to what does your portfolio look at, what are you going to invest in, what is the yield, and how, very importantly, most importantly, can you control the risk on your money? Because if you made a ton of money today, but it all evaporated in the stock market tomorrow, you're no better off. You're just frustrated. So this type of planning is, uh, is very structured, and uh, it's very enjoyable because once you do it, you feel so much better. You can actually sleep better at night because you understand your plan. So again, we have gone through the worst uh, recession in our history. But uh, having the right knowledge, having the proper tools and the access to the right opportunities uh, not only will help you weather what we have been through, but more importantly will help you repair the damage and to move forward because most folks right now don't have any idea what to do, honestly. Uh, they watch the news. It scares them to death. They're frustrated. They're depressed. They have no idea how to repair the financial damage. And I know this is true because I talk to people every week all across this country that uh, had no idea that they could self-direct their retirement money. They had no idea they could diversify it into real estate or other opportunities. All they knew is what they were told. You put your money in mutual funds and you write it up and you will eventually be able to retire with some kind of security. But they don't see that. And what they're hoping is that somebody or something or, or the government will wake up or do something to give them a future that they can depend on. But, you know, we know that's not the case. Washington, D.C. can't even get along right now. So they're not going to be very productive in what they generate in programs. And frankly, you know, who can live on Social Security? <laughs> it's really up to us as individuals to take control of our retirement money and build our own future one block at a time. And again, when people get this frustrated, they go back to the financial professionals that should have the answers, but they don't really get the answers. Maybe you've done this yourself. Maybe you went and talked to your stockbroker or financial planner. What did you hear? Did you hear something like, whoa, whoa, now don't panic. It's okay. The market goes up. The market goes down. But over time, the market always makes money, and you're a long-term investor. You need to write it out. Or you might hear something like, you know what? I know you've had a real big hit in the market. You've lost a lot of money, but now's the time to buy more in the market because it's going to recover, and the economy's coming back, and that's how you can uh, recoup your losses and make even more money. So buy more mutual funds or stocks or bonds. However, there's something else that we're starting to hear more and more, and they're telling us, I, I love this, this is, this is obviously the, the best solution of all. Work longer, <laughs> you're healthy, 
you know, they, they can keep you healthy. They're, the doctors are, are, are keeping us working longer. We're living longer. they got great drugs. So, unfortunately, you know, you're just going to have to work longer, and you can repair the damage, and then you can go ahead and retire. You know, this guy on the right, that really is an Alka-Seltzer moment, isn't it? I mean, these aren't answers. They're not proactive solutions that will help you move forward and build wealth for the future. But that's what most people are hearing. And, and this last comment I just made about working longer, it's true. Google it. <laughs> it's out there. Here's a study from Forbes, an article that says working until age 70 isn't enough. Here's a Time uh, magazine cover. <clears throat> this is a reality for a lot of people that should be with their children, grandchildren, enjoying life. Uh, they're not. They're out here doing jobs that they didn't expect to do at their age. It's a real problem. So really it comes down to things have changed, folks. Uh, we can't just put our money on something and let it ride anymore. We have to decide what's best for ourselves on an individual basis. And each one of us is different. So, you know, you can't really trust the traditional Wall Street model that worked in the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, even the early 90s, because all that has changed nowadays. This is one of my favorite quotes from the book, Get Rich Slow. <clears throat> it says, as a result of others controlling your money, and isn't that what we do? We give our money off to some other person to manage for us. You've been lulled into a false sense of security, believing Someone else is standing guard over your hard-earned dollars and thus guaranteeing your financial future. And that's not true. Uh, it's just simply not true. If, if you lose half of your retirement money, does that change your stockbroker's life, your financial planner's life? They may feel bad, may feel bad for you, <clears throat> but it doesn't change their life. It changes your life because it's your money. And so many people have trusted the system blindly and done obediently what they've been told that, again, they have a sad outcome. <clears throat> Here is something I see at the Super Walmart that I go to in Cottonwood, Arizona, to do some shopping, and I think you see this same thing. <clears throat> I see people walking around painfully on concrete floors for, you know, eight hours a day that should be home with grandkids. But they have no choice because they weren't left with enough income to survive without working. And that's really something that's sad and something we certainly each individually want to, to avoid because the money that you have right now, whatever amount it is, you need to think of as your forever money. <clears throat> this isn't money that you put on something and let it ride and gamble with it and get whatever the outcome in. This is, this is money that you have worked so hard for your whole life that you want this money now going to work for you and providing a life for you. And so your forever money, you can't afford to gamble with it at all. Because again, I, as I said earlier, it's not your financial planner's money. It's not your attorney's money. It's not your CPA's money. It's your money. It's the money that you've put aside for the future of you and your family. So isn't it then your responsibility? <clears throat> it's not your financial planner's responsibility. You know, analogy I use is, uh, <clears throat> you know, if you go to the dentist and the dentist takes a look and says, my goodness, you know, you've got some real problems and cavities everywhere. That's not your dentist's fault. Your dentist repairs the damage but your teeth are your responsibility. It's up to you to floss and brush and gargle and do everything you can to protect your choppers, right? So really, your stockbrokers, your financial planners, your other people provide services. But it's up to you to decide if you take advantage of the services or what services apply to you. The same with investments. It's your money. You should have responsibility and take accountability for it. You should have control of it. If you have control of it, you should be able to decide what is best. What opportunity makes the most sense for you? You know, is it some money in the market? That's great. That's diversification. Is it commercial real estate? Is it residential real estate? Is it precious metals? All of these things are options for your retirement plan so you can diversify your money in a way that makes you comfortable. So you should be able to choose any opportunity. There, are, there is no prohibition whatsoever in the tax code against real estate. You 
can invest in all types of real estate and real estate opportunities. They have always been available to you uh, in IRAs and 401ks. Ultimately, your goal is that your money should be invested in a way that makes you comfortable, that you feel good about, and lets you sleep at night. And that's the whole idea of financial security, isn't it? To say, you know what? My money's growing. My money's doing well. I can look forward to the future and have uh, a decent lifestyle I deserve and weather some of the financial storms that always come up down the road. So for a lot of us, we're at a point of rebuilding our financial houses. Perhaps that's, again, why you're on the webinar. You're looking for the tools and the opportunities to do so. And it's not always about the investment. Now, the investment's important. Obviously, you want to carefully choose your investment. You want to look at uh, how well you're collateralized. You want to look at how much your money is going to generate for you. There's a lot of things that are very important. However, there's another thing that a lot of people just don't think about, and that's the tool, the financial tool that helps you invest your money wisely. And we talk about it as choosing the right tool. And a lot of people say, well, that's an IRA. Because, you know, I, I, when I left the company, I had a 401k, and they said, we're going to move it over to an IRA for you, and that's what they did. But you're going to discover today that you can choose beyond an IRA. An IRA will work. Uh, it's a little bit restrictive and a little more difficult to utilize for most people, but it does work. But there's actually two tools, and one of these tools may fit your life even a little bit better. So choosing the right tool is important. So let's begin with the one that you're probably already familiar with uh, or recently you've discovered, like a self-directed IRA. And let's sort of break it down into about five of its components so that you can understand sort of a little bit about how it works. Now, uh, you're going to have an invitation to a free consultation with me at the end of this webinar. Uh, I'll invest 30 minutes of my time in answering your questions as to how they apply to your personal choices and the tools to help you make the right decisions. I'd encourage you to take advantage of that. Uh, again, I've been doing this for over a quarter of a century, which, yes, Sam, does date me. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I will gladly give you information so that you can make a decision as to what is best for you. Now, of course, I'd love to earn your business, uh, but even if I don't, uh, I'll certainly freely share the information with you so you can make a wise decision for the future. So let's go with a self-directed IRA and sort of break it out a little bit. Now, a self-directed IRA requires a custodian to be involved. This is a bank or a trust company that uh, you open an account with and they hold your retirement money. They are required to be there by law because that's how IRA is written. It says there will always be a custodian. Now, this custodian holds title to your money. So when you make an investment with a self-directed IRA, it says XYZ custodian, then it says FBO or for benefit of, and then your name. So they hold title to your money. You do not. They control it. So if they control it, obviously they control the checkbook, the purse strings, so to speak. So when you're working with a self-directed IRA custodian, in most cases, you fill out their paperwork on the investment opportunity you found. You submit that paperwork to them for their review. Um, they process that request and then purchase that investment for the benefit of your IRA. Again, they hold title. It's just that the paperwork reflects that your IRA owns it. Now, a couple of things to be aware of. <clears throat> because a custodian is involved, they do have authority over your account. So that means that if you find an investment that you're comfortable with and they don't understand it or don't agree, they have the authority to say no. They can say, no, we, we just, we're not comfortable with this. Uh, we just don't think this is something we want to hold in your IRA. But that could be very frustrating and disappointing when you know it's a good investment to make. The second thing is just be aware that when you're doing an investment with a, through a self-directed custodian to give yourself adequate leeway in time. They handle, in many cases, thousands and thousands of clients, so they don't always process things as promptly as you would like to have. So especially if it comes to real estate, something is time sensitive, not only do you want to get it in there promptly, 
you want to call and track its progress and who you're talking to and their extensions and their dates, just so, again, that you can make sure that they get it through the system as quickly as possible so that you don't lose that particular opportunity. Now, since it's an IRA, which is an individual retirement account, you're not allowed to combine your monies with your spouse. So you can't put it into one single account for more investment horsepower. Uh, in fact, in most cases, if you have a common investment you wanted to make, like a residential house, a property, uh, you wouldn't be buying half of it in your IRA and your spouse buying half of it. So again, there are limitations, there are restrictions in the tax code that are there that may prohibit you from making certain investments that you want to make. Be sure that whomever you choose to work with, they're very experienced and they understand this part of the law very well to be able to guide you properly to make these investments because you don't want to mess up with the IRA. Uh, that's, uh, that's a penalty and uh, pain. You don't want to go there. So you've got to follow these rules very carefully. Make sure you have an excellent consultant that can help you with that. The last thing that uh, you can't do with an IRA is borrow money from it personally. A lot of people would have done that through the recession. I had calls constantly saying, well, I just want to borrow some money from my IRA and I'll pay it back with the interest. You know, to you and I, that makes sense. That's logical. Uh, the tax code, folks, is not logical. And one of the uh, laws, one of the rules, you cannot borrow money personally from the plan and take years to pay it back. It just doesn't exist. An IRA is a tax-deferred savings vehicle that you can access in the future when you retire, and you will pay income tax on that money at that time. So there's five of the points uh, that you need to understand about a self-directed custodian. Do they work for real estate? Yes. <clears throat> Are they as flexible and give you as much freedom as you might want to have? Uh, unfortunately, no. So they may limit some of the things that you want to do or a particular investment that you have targeted. So, but that's been the primary vehicle that the financial world talks about and has available. But there's something else that really they don't want you to know about. Uh, this is going to be new news to you, but it's not new news, as you will know, as you will see in a moment. Well, I could say that three, I couldn't say that three times in a row very fast, could I? <laughs> this ain't, this ain't news, new news, folks, it's old news, and you're going to see that in just a moment. Um, in fact, it happened clear back in 2002. Congress created a new option for you, something beyond uh, a self-directed IRA. And uh, it's not information to see in a moment that the financial world's too excited that you discover because they lose control. And we're going to talk about that in, in just a moment. Uh, they put uh, this uh, program out there, and uh, what they did is they created what we call a one-person 401k. Now, one person also refers to a married couple. So they took the traditional 401k plan that many of you probably have contributed to for years, may even be contributing to now, and they made a modification to it. They simplified it to make it easy for people like you and I to use. And they didn't say why, but we believe that what they wanted was another alternative that would encourage us to take control of our own investing because it gives you much more freedom and flexibility. And so maybe it was a subtle message that we need to get busy <laughs> investing our own money for the retirement uh, and, and build our own security for the future. And as you'll see, this plan certainly does give you that freedom and flexibility that, that most people really need, especially when it comes to real estate. So let's do the same thing. Let's go through five bullets of a one-person 401k because we just did the IRS, so they're fresh in your mind. And let's see how these five areas or bullets of information are different between the IRA and a one-person 401k. So remember the self-directed IRA required a custodian to be involved and have authority over your money. So how is this different from a one-person 401k? Well, guess what? You're the trustee. You're the custodian. There is no requirement, ever has been in the tax code, for some company to have control of your money. So you step into their shoes day one and you have uh, that control, you have that authority. So 
So that means you control every penny. No one else does. Uh, you don't have to submit paperwork to someone to get their approval. Nobody can say no. Now, that doesn't mean that there aren't rules. There are. And as if you work, choose to work with me as your professional pension, pension consultant, I'll show you what the rules are, and I'll help guide you and answer your question when it comes to the various opportunities that you're looking at. But the fact is, you control every money. So if you control every, excuse me, control every penny, if you control every penny, you better make it convenient, which means, yes, you have a 401k checkbook in your hand. So here you are, the trustee, you have authority over every penny, and you have a checkbook to easily invest that money. So just in those three bullets, you see the differences between a self-directed IRA and the 401k. That way, it gets better. Here is something very interesting. You, and if you're married, and your spouse has retirement money, you can pool your funds together. That gives you convenient control over your money, gives you more money for more investing. I call it more investment horsepower. Not only can you pool your retirement plans together, you can also make very large contributions to this plan. Depending on your age and how well you're doing and how you're structured, uh, if you're age 50, excuse me, 49 or younger, you can put away as much as $50,000 a year. If you're older than that, you can put away as much as $55,000 a year, maybe even a little bit more in most scenarios. So if you're looking for a plan that lets you really dump in a lot of money, uh, this plan certainly does allow that. So you can roll over money for previous plans, plus you can make contributions if you wish to. Here's something else that's vastly different from the self-directed IRA. It allows you to borrow money from it. The IRA, remember, does not, but the 401k does. So you can borrow up to 50% of the amount of money in your plan to a maximum of $50,000. Now, why would borrowing money be a nice privilege? Well, there's different things that come up in life that if you could borrow from your plan as your source, you wouldn't have to borrow from a credit card or some other bank. So I've had people borrow money to buy an investment in their name and uh, put the profit in their pocket and simply play, pay back the plan, the principal, and some interest. I've had people pay off bills that got them back on, on firm ground so that they could focus on moving forward. I've uh, had people save their businesses by being able to borrow money to keep their business afloat, and, and that was good for them. It doesn't matter why you want to borrow money. All that matters is that you pay it back to the 401k. Uh, borrowing money is not an investment. It's merely a personal, like a credit line, that can help you out when you need it. You have up to five years to pay the money back to the plan, either monthly or quarterly payments, uh, right now, the uh, fixed rate is five and a quarter percent. So it gives you a, a place to borrow some money to do something important in your life and simply pay yourself back with interest. So you get to be the bank for the change uh, for a change if you want to. So that's another privilege of the 401k that has helped a lot of people of our clients uh, to get through this and weather this particular recession. Now, I mentioned, uh, too, that you can consolidate your plans. Both you and your spouse can bring your plans together. So let's just run down through some of the plans that you could consolidate and roll over into the 401k. First one, you can. <laughs> it's a Roth IRA. Congress says that because Roth IRAs are after-tax money, you can't put them into the 401k. So those have to go and play by themselves. However, if you have a previous employer 401k, a traditional IRA, a SEP IRA, a teacher 403b, and you've retired from being a teacher or a government plan, all of those can all be rolled down and used to fund the plan and bring that money together for whatever investment purposes that, uh, that you want to make. So when we started here a few minutes ago, probably... I, w I would make a good guess that most of you only knew about a self-directed IRA. Now you've discovered there's an alternative, a whole different option that does give you more freedom and flexibility if that's what you require. But if I was sitting here listening to this webinar, like you are right now, I would probably have this thought in my head. Sounds really good, Dave, but <laughs> 
it almost sounds too good to be true. I mean, why hasn't my CPA or my stockbroker or my financial planner told me about this, if this is so good? Well, let's talk about why you probably haven't heard about it. The financial world operates on two rules, ladies and gentlemen. They work very hard to get control of your money, and they work at equally as hard to keep control of your money. That is their business plan. That's their retirement plan. And that's when they control the trillions of dollars that they do in this country, uh, does it make sense for them to say, oh, by the way, if you had a one-person 401k, uh, you control every penny, you control the checkbook, and you can invest in anything you want. That's contrary to their business model, isn't it? If you invest some of your money, retirement money, into real estate, does your stockbroker make a penny? No, not a cent. So would they be anxious to tell you that you could have control of your money? No, because again, that's the opposite of the way that they make money. They really don't want you to have control of your money because they lose control, they lose money. But sad to say, many financial professionals don't think you and I are smart enough to control our own money. Uh, that, that if we get control of our money, uh, we're just going to make foolish investments and blow it all. However, I don't know why they have that attitude when the stock market has evaporated billions of dollars for people in the last few years. But that really is very prevalent in the financial world. So instead of you listening to Dave out in Sedona, Arizona, tell you about this plan, and yes, it exists, what I want to do now is show you some quick proof that it isn't hidden, that it is out there, that it is legitimate, and it is an option for you to consider uh, when you've made the decision to take back control of your retirement money. So here are some, some proof. These are screenshots from various websites. So let's go back to October 2002. Here's Smart Money Magazine. It was an article called The Perks of the Solo 401k. Now, a one-person 401k has a variety of names. Solo 401k, individual, unik, uh, Freedom First 401k. There's a variety of names. They are all the same thing. They're all based on that tax code. They're all referring to the one-person plan. So here's Smart Money 2002. Here's the Journal of Accountancy for CPAs in March 2003, talking about the single participant 401k. Here's USA Today, December 2003, talking about the uh, individual 401k. Here's uh, the uh, CPA site talking about the one-person 401k strategy. Notice the dates. Here's 2007. CBS Money Watch reported on the solo 401k, big tax savings for the self-employed, November 2009. Here's the Wall Street Journal, February 2010, 401ks for solo businesses. Here's the government site. Small Business Administration talking about one participant 401k plans. Uh, this magazine, Financial Advisor magazine, felt it was so important that they ran it twice. They ran it in September 2004, and then they ran it October 2012. So again, it's not hidden. It's out here. It's, uh, either the financial advisors haven't been trained and to understand it, or if they know it's available, simply don't want to talk about it because they could lose control of your money. So now that you know that you have an option, you've seen that it's out there, it is real, you can easily find it on the, the Internet and various websites, we want to talk about what we do. Uh, our brand of one person 401k is called the Freedom First 401k because really that's what it's about you having the freedom and the flexibility to do what you think is best with your money, to invest in a way that makes you comfortable, in a way that you see fit. And so we spend a great deal of time helping real estate investors in particular create wealth tax-free. And so this plan, with the proper support and the coaching that we provide and teaching you how to use it and how to be comfortable with it, which is really quite easy, uh, you're able to then have that freedom to go out there and invest. Now, when you're investing, or when I teach about investing and strategies of investing, I know I learn better and easier from seeing what other people have done. So let's talk a little bit about a couple, Steve and Mary Jones. Uh, 
this may be a person that uh, sounds familiar to you. Maybe uh, you'll feel a little bit of a connection to these folks. Uh, they were disgusted with the system. Uh, they didn't like what had been happening over the last few years, and frankly, they were under pressure. Uh, Mary is 53 and Steve is 56, and Frank, they, they're not going to work till age 70 or later. That isn't, isn't even an option. So they know that they need to get involved because in 2007, they had two IRAs that had together were valued at over $235,000. Now, they were doing exactly what their financial planner told them to do. Keep making your contributions. You're a long-term investor. Keep it in these growth funds. And, uh, you know, you're going to have money down the road. Well, about 2000, late 2010, they did a financial review. They were just seeing where they were at. And they did not like what they found. Because at that time, uh, actually today, not just really long, not long ago, they had $146,205. Uh, this is, I remember one gentleman that, uh, that made a comment, why did I keep putting money in an IRA? only to lose it. You know, he said, I should have just let it ride and not even made the contributions and kept the money in my pocket. But people do as they're told to do. So at this point, they had about 38% loss. They had recovered, had recovered some in their account, but the clock is ticking. At 53 and 56, you don't have the luxury of time. You need to get busy and get things done. And that's exactly where Mary and Steve found themselves and so what I did for this couple was set up the Freedom First 401k. We combined the IRAs so they had checkbook control of every penny. Now they could get focused on investing. They had checkbook control day one, and they could begin to look, in their case, at real estate investments. So when we get over to the investing world and that, uh, I don't offer investments. I'm not an expert in that arena. So I would like to hand off the floor to uh, Mr. Sam. Uh, Ali, and have him uh, share some interesting thoughts with you today. Sam? David, I, I uh, have amazing information. and You know, it's, it's, uh, I'm going to ask that you control the screen and, and move the slides for us here because our web hosting service, of course, is not going to allow me to do that tonight. That's probably a good thing that one of us has control instead of just me. Uh, but uh, like Steve and Mary and perhaps many others that uh, – that are on tonight. I know you and I have spoken at, uh, at length many times and, and, and a couple of topics continue to come up and, and, and that's trust and lack of knowledge. You know, today's uh, investor, much like our example couple there, they simply just don't know who the hell to trust or, or, or where to put their money uh, to get it working for them. And you know, Early on, everybody, I mentioned trusted advisors. And, uh, you know, a few years ago, uh, I was staring down 50, <laughs> which is so hard for me to spit out of my mouth, but I took my lumps in the market much like they did. I watched my uh, 401k that I had basically turn into, uh, I think maybe an 01k is what it uh, what it pretty much was by that time. And uh, you know, I, I wanted to take advantage of the, the real estate market uh, before I became one of those, you know, shoulda, coulda, woulda, uh, you know, five years down the line. Boy, if I only, I just didn't want that to happen to me. Um, I was actually referred to the HIS Capital Group back then uh, by somebody that I trusted. So. I conducted my diligence, which included four very important criteria that, uh, you know, that, that those that I was going to entrust with my bill, these things had to be met. And that's something that I stress to everybody that I come across that's considering investing or managing their own money. It's whatever that you're doing, you're, you're looking to identify an organization that's credibility, transparency, uh, accountability, and, and most of all, of course, profitability. Uh, there, there were also things I needed to know, like uh, does their business model make sense? Is their return worth pursuing? Uh, heck, do they have their own skin in the game with me? Uh, is their management team experienced? Uh, and foremost, uh, is there collateral or some security in the deal? Now, what I learned was that I really did not have to be a millionaire to have the ability to invest like one. Uh, really learned in order to withstand another economic meltdown, uh, which history tells us uh, we will experience yet again, uh, that I needed to diversify and, and that a real estate portfolio could actually be diversified just like the stock market. Uh, with one major difference, I had collateral here, not just a certificate. Uh, with programs like the Solo 
401k, I could keep more of what I made and I could grow it consistently. Uh, now, several years later, I'm now the vice president of business development, BHIS Capital Group, Group, excuse me, which truly all came about after rolling over uh, my old 01k plan a few years back. Now, many of you tonight, uh, I would venture to say probably 90% of you know that, uh, that real estate is a good play in any economy, but even more so today. Uh, but that window of opportunity certainly isn't going to last. Now, you know, with all the factors that I mentioned early on about choosing the right team, trust, credibility, accountability, transparency, now making your money work, um, with that in mind, we created a program to encourage those who are maybe either on the fence of deciding if they should um, add real estate as an earning strategy or maybe are looking to earn a solid, consistent, secure, fixed return. This program is something that we call the Leverage Joint Venture, and it actually provides an investor with the, the ability to not only put their money to work, but to diversify their funds into several assets and then limiting their exposure and their risk and increasing their earnings securely. That's something that we all want to do. Now, many of Dave's clients are enjoying the peace of mind they receive working with our company. We've got 10 plus year track record of consistent performance, credibility of over a half a billion dollars in completed transactions. Uh, that was certainly something that I found out during my diligence. Now, what I've done here this evening is put together a few examples of the types of assets that our clients, including many of Dave's, as I've mentioned, uh, uh, especially like our example couple of Steve and Mary, um, something that you can look at here this evening. Now, trust is earned. I get that. Uh, they had to earn my trust as well, much like they had to earn our trust to begin a relationship together and vice versa. Uh, many of our new clients here started with as little as $25,000 now. 25000 by no means, everybody. I, I don't consider that little, uh, but in the investing world today, um, that's just, uh, you know, just one of those terms. But you can start with $25,000, something like this, and get it diversified. And, and yes, even I, uh, at that point, my funds were diversified as well into multiple assets and asset classes. And, you know, this first property here is something that I want to show you at uh, uh, standard middle-class home, that previous picture that we had up there was what it looked like when we found it. This is what it looks like afterwards. Uh, middle-class home, decent neighborhood, uh, also involved in an area that's experiencing an uptick, which certainly fits some of our criteria. Uh, originally, we purchased this with the, uh, the intent to flip it, actually, to another investor you know, for a quick turn on our money before we closed on the deal, but unfortunately, that investor uh, did not get to the closing table uh, funded in time. So... Uh, as I mentioned, this property fits some of our criteria. It also fits a profile from multiple exit strategies. It's a very key uh, component when you're identifying assets to secure. Uh, now, let's look at some of the numbers here. And we put a tenant in it for $900 a month. That certainly would make for a nice long-term cash flow. And a couple of months later, we actually sold this to another investor at a generous profit. This individual purchased it for 66000 but there was also still meat on the bone for this investor. The value at that time was about 78000 And actually, if we would have waited several more months, uh, uh, today's value right now, we'd probably be able to sell it for about 92000 I believe is what the, the price value is uh, in that area today. And that's just because of the way things are happening in the market, how it's driving. Uh, uh, we hear about the market every day, especially the the housing industry being uh, uh, changing. It's an ever-changing landscape. They say that property values are increasing. That's simply being driven up by investors who are purchasing these properties. And now values uh, have gone a little bit higher. But getting back to my point here, uh, this is also an example of servicing two investor types. Uh, the active investor landlord type who can buy from us completely turnkey, uh, or perhaps a passive investor who simply funds along with us to purchase these assets. Now, those pictures on the lower left of your screen there, I really wish I could enlarge them for you all, but you know, when I spoke of transparency earlier, well, these are snapshots of our investor dashboard that each client has access to. Again, transparency. This gives our clients 24-7 peace of mind because they get to look at their assets that they're involved in, the funds that have been deployed, how they're performing compared to the S&P and other vehicles, also an account ledger so you can see the movement of your funds and especially uh, your, your, your quarterly interest payments. Um, I kind of call it my bragging tool. My friends come over, I kind of get to show them all the cool projects I actually get to be a part of. But it also houses all the documentation between us. So you've got access to all the 
legal instruments that pertain to our relationship, the collateral involved. And you see the HUD documents and every penny spent for renovations, there's pictures, videos of, of our rehab. If you're involved in one of those projects, you're in tune every step of the way to every penny you have invested with us, where they've been allocated to, and um, how we move forward with them. Uh, David, if you would, please go to the next slide. Now, we talk about cash flow all the time, and uh, affordable housing is certainly at its highest demand since, since the Great Depression. Uh, it's also one of the most profitable asset classes in the housing sector. Um, as a matter of fact, even uh, Warren Buffett, who everybody has become quite familiar with, has made a great deal of his fortune through manufactured homes. Now, this particular mobile home park is uh, about an hour from the Gulf Coast in a little town called uh, Op, Alabama, which is truly short for Opportunity Alabama. And uh, quite frankly, this asset has been quite fortuitous to those uh, of us who have invested in it. Now, our focus uh, at HI's Capital Group is on mismanaged and undervalued assets that have a long-term upside. And truly nothing defines that more than this uh, little hidden gem. Um, now, if we go to the next slide, I'm going to show you some things that are somewhat eye-opening and what we truly focus on. Now, I'm going to show you the numbers that truly matter here. And uh, if you take a look there, we're going to look at our net operating income. Um, <laughs> that net operating income is generated by 38 lots only. Now, this property has an upside, quite frankly, of an additional 100 lots. Now, we're showing, you know, 112 lots here, but that's simply our conservative look. We like to approach things in that fashion. Now, this is a wonderful waterfront community. It's 45 acres. It's certainly going to provide for a long-term secured return to many of our passive investors, myself included. Um, again, you know, the dashboard uh, that investors uh, have access to, if you're involved in a commercial asset like this that's generating cash flow, you're, you still have access. You still get to see every step of the way uh, how it's performing, uh, what we're doing to continually upgrade the property. You're in tune every step of the way, 24-7. Uh, that certainly gives me peace of mind as well as many of our clients. Uh, there are also many that simply just use it as a tool to, hey, Tom, hey, Dave, take a look at this uh, piece of uh, piece of property that I own. Um, now, granted, they probably only own a portion of it, but when we brag, we tend to kind of stretch it a little bit, don't we? Now, I think uh, uh, this we look at 112 lots. Actually, we're probably going to grow this to 160 lots because it has that capability, but we're going to do it gradually. Gradually, that means year by year. This uh, uh, hidden gem here will continue to perform, and it will perform at an increased rate, and it's something that we're all going to enjoy long term. And of course, uh, as we move into an equity stage investment type opportunity with many of our clients, this inevitably will provide mailbox money, and I think that's something that we're all looking for. Uh, Dave, if you would, please head to the next slide for us. I really uh, <laughs> enjoy saving the best for last. Uh, but when I realized, uh, uh, you know, when I was selecting the signature project for everybody to take a look at here tonight, this truly probably represents one of the greatest benefits of working with HIS. Now, our acquisition strategy and our, our philosophy truly provides a portal for novice and accredited investors alike to enjoy the benefits, excuse me, the benefits of larger income producing assets like this pristine piece of country in uh, St. Mary's, Georgia. Now, uh, you baby boomers may remember that uh, that old uh, uh, commercial, Calgon, take me away. Uh, well, I think this is where everybody went uh, when Calgon took them there. Our, uh, 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 this, frankly, will be the ultimate in recreation and relaxation in the southeast. Uh, called Cumberland Harbor. Dave, if you would, please go to the next slide. Uh, this area is, uh, is truly part of the, uh, the history books. Um, and as was recently discovered, uh, the last battle of the War of 1812 uh, was waged here, uh, literally changing the history books. Um, but the serenity, truly, uh, of this area is almost mystical. Um, and I tell you, you can just feel the stress of the daily grind melt away uh, the minute that you get here. Uh, quite honestly, if you will go to the next slide, uh, I call this the land that time forgot, but it left all the amenities continue to grow and enhance and refine and you know this is uh, truly a great example of the type of project that investor can grow into with us uh, this is typically again where many of our fixed return investors become equity investors uh, or on a long-term passive income traditionally where it's a three to five year investment and at some point then in many cases may provide an infinite 
return after you've received your dollars back in that course of three to five years, you're still part of the deal. There's that mailbox for me again. Now, you'll see this beautiful home was actually uh, built on one of the lots uh, uh, fr- uh, that we owned uh, for about $300,000. If we go to the next slide, David, I could talk about this house all day long, but we'll keep moving forward here in honor of everybody's time. Now, we're going to take a peek at some of these numbers here. And again, this is a prime example of acquiring undervalued assets with an exceptional and long-term upside. Um, <laughs> now, if we do the math, as I indicated, that property was built on uh, on land that was purchased from us for about three hundred thousand dollars. Now, we were offered approximately five million a couple of months after this acquisition, but we declined it. And I think our investor partners are pretty pleased with our decision. Now, you're looking at 118 lots, 44 waterfront, two marinas, which basically is going to be the largest permanent marina in the state of Georgia. Our acquisition price there is the important number, as well as one there at the bottom, tax appraised value. That's our current value as of today, ladies and gentlemen. So, again, undervalued mismanaged assets with a long-term upside. That's certainly something that we're going to enjoy here with our signature project in Cumberland Harbor. Now, you'll also see that the reporting tools are there for our equity investors are well that are involved in these projects. And when I talk about bragging rights, that certainly gives me some things to talk about. When I have some friends over that ask me what I'm into, and I'll show them some opportunities like this, and I can show them how much part of it that I have, where my funds have been deployed, how they're tracked on a daily basis. And that's my peace of mind. Peace of mind because I've got mailbox money coming in every day. So bottom line here, everybody, ladies and gentlemen, if you are seeking to add real estate as an investment strategy, like our example couple of Steve and Mary, as well as, other, as, well as others, if you're looking for a secured and a generous fixed return, currently at 10 to 12%, Believe our track record, uh, ten-year performance, a hundred plus years of real estate expertise and knowledge that we have, and the credibility of over a half a billion dollars in acquisitions is right for you. I certainly would like to discuss doing business with you. Um, and now, since our uh, our chat box is quite functioning properly, what I'd like to do is take the opportunity to throw some throw some questions out there at Mr. Cole, David. If have a few more minutes. I, uh, I'd like to grill you a little bit. Some questions I think may be important to our audience. You got a few minutes? Absolutely. Yeah. Why don't we, uh, just for the heck of it here, Dave, move forward to that next slide uh, so everybody knows how to maybe get a hold of you while I grill you. Um, we'll probably put the stroke of their pen there, as you probably will say. Um, let, me, uh, let me just uh, get to that particular slide again. Uh, I hope that I've been able to share with folks today the fact that you have a couple of options to have controlling your money. Uh, obviously, the 401k plan will give you the most freedom and flexibility. But again, when I talk to you, uh, do our private consultation, uh, I'll make you a promise. Uh, when we get done, you will uh, know which plan works the best for you and your situation. And uh, then you'll be able to move forward with confidence and have control of your money through whichever plan is, is best and be able to make decisions to, uh, to invest it wisely. And I really, you know, I couldn't have said it better, Sam. Credibility, transparency, accountability, and profitability. If, if everyone would apply those four principles to the investments that they make, uh, they can experience uh, much greater success than they have in the past. So uh, basically, again, the clock is ticking. It's ticking for all of us. Uh, all of us have to uh, take on this responsibility and, and seriously uh, make plans for the future. And we hope that uh, not only will you uh, choose the best plan for you, but you'll choose the best people to work with. And it is a real privilege for me to uh, have a relationship with the HIS Capital Group. Uh, they're a phenomenal group of people. Uh, they met my standards, and there are very few companies or organizations that do because I'm very particular with my reputation and I care very much about the people that uh, I work with. I have uh, absolutely no reservations whatsoever referring people over to look at the opportunities from HIS uh, Capital Group. So what I'm asking from you is very simple. Uh, In fact, it's a gift I'm going to give you and that's 30 minutes of my time to talk about whatever you need to talk about in your plan, how it works, what is best for you. So you need to contact me for this consultation. 
uh, you can certainly call me on that uh, phone number. In fact, uh, if you have a, a notepad and pencil, I hope you've been taking notes, uh, let me also give you a toll-free number, 888-220-6255. So either that local number or that toll-free. Uh, my email, that is my personal email. Uh, you can certainly visit us at our website also, freedomfirst401k.com. You can visit me on my LinkedIn profile and message me there also. And uh, if you send me an email, just please put in the subject line, uh, free consultation. And uh, that way uh, I'll identify quickly and I'll respond back to you. We'll just pick a time that's, that's uh, convenient. So I am looking forward to, to working with you and, and talking to you, getting to know each one of you. We're going to leave this slide up here while uh, Sam gets ready to, I guess, grill me. Yeah, I think I'd, uh, I'd probably like to do that, Dave, because I'm sure uh, our audience has some questions. Of course, they can get a lot of that Q&A by taking advantage of uh, the consultation, which I highly urge everybody to do. Um, it's 30 minutes of your time that can help you strategize your long-term future. And uh, I know Dave and I talked earlier about, about our long-term futures. And as we get older, and I know many of us that are on the call here this evening have kind of uh, uh, ventured into the, the 50s, which, okay, they say 50s are the new 40, but I'm having a little difficulty believing some of that. But as we get into that stage, our, uh, our, our medical histories just tend to get a little bit longer. We've got to be prepared for the future, everybody. And, you know, heck, I, I, I know as we put some numbers together with uh, some of our financial uh, advisors like Dave here, I mean, the estimate right now is I think just for health care alone, we need to have a, a couple hundred thousand dollars uh, of access, accessible dollars and cents to help us navigate through our health issues. So uh, it's time to get serious, everybody. And I think in the 30 minutes that uh, Dave uh, will afford to you, you will, uh, your eyes will be open a little bit. You'll understand that there are some more things aside from just a, uh, an IRA that can help you move forward in that direction. So uh, I guess, uh, Dave, I, uh, I know we talked earlier here. Um, you mentioned some things about the different types of, uh, of uh, IRAs and things of that nature. Are there variations of the of the solo uh, uh, or individual 401k uh, that are out there? I mean, like Roth has a variety of different types of things. Are there variations on the solo? Well, when people do their uh, research, Sam, uh, what they're going to find out is that even though there are some custodians that offer solo 401ks, uh, individual plans, their, their intent really is to get control of your money. Uh, they'll say, oh, yeah, no problem. We'll set this up and we'll, we'll help you do this and that. But if they have control of your money, they're transactional fee-based, which means that they, you pay them for every piece of paper that they sign or fax or whatever they do for you. The, the rarity, the, the, the thing that's difficult for people to find is where somebody hands them the keys to the Cadillac, where they truly set up a plan or set up a plan that truly rather puts you in control. And that's what people have difficulty finding because the financial world wants control in some way. So in answer to your question, there's either going to be uh, IRAs and 401ks that a company wants control of your money to earn fees, or there's going to be like the Freedom First 401k where we put you in control. And that would be the major differences in, in 401ks, for example. Now, I know uh, uh, you know with IRAs we can open up multiples. Do you have are there instances where, where where clients are opening up? You know, I've got one because of the contribution levels. Now there are many in real estate that that uh, may be working short sales and, and they get a nice payday. Um, they're they're going to contribute to one. Can they can they open up multiples uh, or other restrictions? And how many you can have? Well, there's no restrictions to the number of retirement plans that you can have. But when you go to the tax code, there are restrictions on the total aggregated amount of contributions. So, you know, if, if I had 10 retirement plans, I still could not contribute to those plans more than the maximum based on the law or my income. So for most people, what we find is they end up with several scattered around IRAs, 401ks, and other types of plans. And... Because they're not in one account, they're sort of out of sight, out of mind. They don't know what to do with them. They're not focused on, on uh, one single pot of money to invest. Um, so by being able to, again, bring all these plans together down into one plan, you not only have more money to invest, 
but you only have one plan then to make contributions to, which based on your income, uh, you could, you know, go to the maximum. The 401k, as I mentioned earlier, you know, as much as $50,000 or more per spouse can be put into this plan. So I, I, I hope that answered your question. Uh, yeah, actually, it, it does, and I think one, one, let's add one more thing to that, David, now, okay? Uh, what about a business partner? As opposed to a spouse, can a business partner be involved in a, in a, in a solo 401k with someone? Uh, again, that's something that we on this end take a, a look at. In a lot of circumstances, the answer is yes. So we'll run across people that have formed an LLC with a partner, and in that case, uh, a lot of times uh, after our review, which we'll have our, our pension attorney take a peek at that, uh, they do qualify, and we can set up a plan where they can both participate in the one plan. Excellent. Excellent. So I guess this is probably a big thing that we all look for, and, and, and we're all hearing, you know, I mean, I mentioned earlier about the $17 trillion that's locked up in, in savings vehicles like IRA, IRAs, et cetera. And for some strange reason, that there's some symmetry happening here because the government is what uh, 18, 19, 20 trillion in debt. They certainly want to attack uh, the money that's sitting there. But I've also heard that that there's different protection levels. So are there different protection clauses here with the solo 401k versus some of the other IRAs? You know, you brought up some interesting things there. Um, you know, this I'm going to share a personal opinion, but you know, after watching this for a quarter of a century and seeing what's going on, I, I believe that in the next few years, we're definitely going to see some changes in, in retirement plans, IRAs in particular. Um, and so there will be some, some adaption, adapting that people need to do. Uh, it will affect 401ks uh, less because 401ks are designed for employees to participate in. And... Um, 401ks are a great supporter of the stock market. So, again, there will be some things that we see down the road uh, that government will make a few changes. Uh, the most, the biggest thing we're concerned about, though, right now is when you plan for the future, we're talking about building money for the future. Uh, Sam, you raised the issue of health concerns. That certainly has to be planned for. But there's something that we do have as a threat every single day of our life, and that is... Uh, some type of lawsuit. Uh, we have, you know, we're the, we are the most litigious country in the world. We graduate hundreds of thousands of new attorneys a year. Uh, they have to make a living. <laughs> and oftentimes that living is taking stuff from other people. And so that has to be a concern that we have to factor in. 401ks have the strongest asset protection of any retirement plan. Uh, they are a virtual fortress from external attacks, be it creditor attacks or lawsuit attacks, with the exception of criminal activity, of course, then all bets are off. But uh, for most people, when they're concerned about asset protection, uh, the 401k is one of the crown jewels of their overall asset protection because of how strong it, it, it is. That's phenomenal. That's, that, that actually excites me as I've, uh, like many others, are, are really concerned about what's going on. Not only is, is, is some of this information new for us about solo 401ks for, for many, uh, as well as taking control of our own checkbook futures, it's like, well, now we're going to jump in the water to start doing that. And then the hysteria over it may be getting attacked or how the hell do we protect ourselves at all. It, it's like a never-ending process, which is why we have to stay in tune with with, with advisors like yourself, David, and, and some of the others that we've surrounded ourselves with, why the power team that we that we amass uh, uh, to surround ourselves with is so important to find out the things that we don't know. And they always say, you don't know what you don't know until you need to know it. Well, it's time to get proactive and then learn as much as you can about how to protect yourself. So a couple more questions, David, and then we'll, we'll, we'll let you mosey on. But it, it, who does... Who does a solo work best for? Uh, you know, is it just the, the, the self-employed entrepreneur uh, or small business owners? Uh, is there a specific fit or is it general? Well, again, this, this is something where people get a little bit confused, Sam, because they hear the term self-employed and, and solo businesses and all of that. Uh, most people are quite delighted to discover that they do qualify to have a, a Freedom First 401k. <clears throat> yes, it is a benefit of business activity, 
but you don't have to be in business supporting yourself that way. So oftentimes I run into a situation. Uh, in fact, I was talking yesterday uh, with uh, an attorney that uh, wants to set up a plan with us. And uh, I mentioned, of course, that there has to be business activity to qualify. Now, business activity should not be mistaken for business entity. So a lot of people, again, think that to be in business, you have to be a, a limited liability company or a C corporation or a subchapter S corporation. That's not the case. A, a good example of that, Sam, are realtors. I have a lot of realtor clients. Realtors are sole proprietors. They're not an entity in most cases. They receive the commissions in their personal name, and then they just file a business return to show their, their expenses and their ultimate profit that they're taxed on. So, um, you know, you don't have to be an entity, but you do have to have activity. So let me give you an example of activity. I have a, uh, a gentleman that called me. He owns uh, some rental homes, which he was taking as passive income, and he desperately wants a Freedom First 401k, but he doesn't have time to uh, to go out and uh, he's a professional airline pilot from one of the big airlines. He does not have time to, to go out and do other things on the side. So I explained to him that if he took a small amount of active income, a fee for managing each property, that that creates an instant business. That is his business activity. Uh, referred him over to the CPA on our board, and so they conferred with him and said, absolutely, that's dead on, and they agreed on how much he would take from the rentals, and he has an instant business. So during our consultation, uh, don't assume that you don't qualify because you're hearing his words, business, etc. I'll show you how simple it is, maybe about what you're already doing, or what you could easily do to open up the door to have the 401k and, and more freedom. Oh, that's 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 awesome. That is absolutely awesome. You just, uh, <laughs> I think I got a couple more questions, Dave. So, <laughs> there. Uh, but uh, you know, we you mentioned earlier on about uh, you know the the ability to be able to borrow. Well, hey, life happens. Things happen. Things get in the way of messing with our plan, and we've got to adapt and improvise. Now, uh, say say we borrow. Uh, you know, hey, I'm going to borrow some of that. Maybe I have to borrow up to that fifty thousand if I'm lucky enough to have that in the in the plan. And, you know, life gets in the way, David, and, and I know it's five years to pay it back. What happens if, you know, it's just that severe that I can't pay myself back? Well, uh, Eddie, there are some uh, some cure periods. Uh, sometimes people will get a hold of us and say, Dave, borrowed the money, and I've been paying it back, and then, you know, something happened, that, that I've got a problem. So there is some gracious cure periods built into the tax code that uh, that, that can be fixed. But let's just say it's not an alternative. It's just that's it. It's done. Uh, that would be a distribution in that case from the plan, and that would be a taxable event that a person would have to plan for. However, if they indeed cannot pay it back because of a financial situation, generally they're in a lower tax bracket, so that mitigates some of the uh, some of the taxation that they would have to pay. But again, uh, we work very closely with you and your professional tax advisor so that you understand your options, cure periods, and what you could do so that you can make the best decision uh, at that particular time. That's, and there's a reason why I ask that question, everybody that's listening, and, and, and let's face it, I talked about power team, we're building your, your, the team around you. This is why it's so important to do so. It's why it's so important for you to take advantage of that 30 minutes, because as you're hearing from Dave, there's a hell of a lot more to this, excuse my French, uh, than, than just setting up an IRA or a 401k to, to, to plan for your future. There's a lot of detail that goes into it. There's a lot of things that we don't know. Quite frankly, I don't want to have to know this stuff. I want to rely on people like Dave to help guide me and navigate through uh, the myriad of minutia of, excuse, again, crap that we've got to look at that, you know, hey, I might, it's like going to school, learning something that you don't want to learn. You take the test, you forget about it, and you move on. Um, I, I, I want to have those others just keep me uh, in the loop, keep me on a straight and narrow, keep making sure that I am on the right path to get to where I want to get to, um, you know, for my future. So uh, I guess last but not least, Dave, I will I will ask you this. Um, many envision that, heck, I don't want to go through all the hoops of how do you change this over? How can I transfer? Is it a pain? How hard is it to get started with you? Well, that's, that's the interesting thing. Uh, I will say this, that when Congress made these changes back in 2002, 
and then they made further amendments in 2006. Uh, folks, they knocked it out of the park. I, I, we were we were amazed because they had been yakking about it for a while, and you know how Congress talks uh, before they do it, and then when they do it, you go look at it and say, well, that doesn't even look like, like what you talked about. In this case, they, they did so much better. So it really uh, makes it even easier for most people than a self-directed IRA. I have a phenomenal staff here that is very good and very efficient at what uh, setting these plans up. We make it extremely easy uh, to guide you through the process. There's there's not a lot for you to do. Uh, of course, you have to. We help you open the bank account. You have to work at the bank to establish the account, and it's your money to roll over. So only you can do that. But we always prepare the forms. We guide you through the process, answer your questions. Most people find that within an average of about three weeks, everything's done, finished. The money is in the bank. They've got the checkbook in their hand, and they're ready to move forward. So it's it's really a, a fairly painless process for most people. That's fantastic. That is absolutely fantastic. David, I, I just want to thank you on behalf of to myself and, and the entire HIS team, as well as those that are here listening tonight. I mean, your your passion uh, for assisting others uh, build for the future is, is admirable, and uh, certainly uh, we can feel it and hear it in your voice. Uh, every time I chat with you, I know how important this is to you, and uh, I urge all of those of you that are on the, uh, on the phone and on the call here tonight to take Dave up on his consultation offer. I, I am certainly confident that uh, you'll find, as I have, uh, that he will become a valued and, and trusted advisor uh, that's truly dedicated to helping you keep more of, uh, of what you've earned, uh, but uh, maybe even more important to help you not outlive your money. So, uh, uh, David, again, I, I thank you uh, for joining us here tonight and taking the time to do so. And uh, once again, everybody, I urge you all to take advantage of the opportunity to reach out. Uh, uh, it certainly will be well worth uh, maybe some of the best 30 minutes that you spent because I, I, I am also aware uh, by working with Dave that uh, the solo 401k is simply just one of the tools that he has uh, in his kit to, uh, to assist you uh, to plan for the long term. So once again, David, uh, truly thank you so much. And uh, uh, send some of that uh, uh, that warmth uh, from Arizona up to the Chicago area. That's where I'm I can kind of use some of that, my man. <laughs> well, ask me ask me about warmth about July. We'll talk again. <laughs> Sam, you got it, Dave. It's been a pleasure. I've enjoyed our visit. You got it, my man. Have a great night. You betcha. Thank you. Thanks. And to you, ladies and gentlemen, I certainly thank you for joining us tonight. If you have any questions, you see that information there on the screen on how to reach out to Dave. I'm sure immediately following this, you'll, you'll uh, get an email blast out that will tell you how to get in touch with me should you wish to do so. There will also be a recording available, so please don't hesitate to send an email. We'll send one out to you. Once again,